Hey guys, this is Anna from the Junior League of Charlotte, and I'm going to read a couple of stories from Peter Rabbit. So we are going to start with the tale of Peter Rabbit. If you guys see here, the story was written in 1902, so it is almost 120 years old, which is pretty old. All right, let's get started. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit, one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. There's the pie. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket in her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather some blackberries. So they are gathering blackberries and there's their mom taking that basket and her umbrella down to the baker's. But Peter, who was a very naughty bunny, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he see but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling, stop thief. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden for he had forgotten the way back to, his, to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them both, he ran on four legs and went faster so that, he, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in, if it had not so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn over each flower pot, looking carefully under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time he began to wander about going lippity lippity not very fast and looking all around he found a door in a wall but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he began, became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans 
A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed. But suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. There he is, hiding. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and he was safe at the last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down under the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what had he done with his jacket and clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Do you guys know what fortnight means? It means two weeks. So he has lost a jacket and shoes in two weeks, twice in two weeks. I'm very sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. So it sounds like Peter Rabbit lost out on some yummy, yummy dinner because he decided to go to Mr. McGregor's garden and eat a bunch of his food. Then he didn't feel very well. All right, let's do this story. The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin. And this was written in 1903. This is, the this is a tale about a tail, a tail that belonged to a little red squirrel, and his name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins that lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. In the middle of the lake, there is an island covered with trees and nut bushes, and amongst those trees stands a hollow oak tree, which is the house of an owl who is called Old Brown. One autumn, when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all the other little squirrels came out of the wood and down to the edge of the lake. They made little rafts out of twigs and they paddled away over the water to Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack and a large oar and, and spread out his tail for a sail. I see they're sailing away. They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown and put them upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? But Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners. He bobbed up and down like a little red cherry singing, riddle me, riddle me, root tote tote, a little wee man in a red, red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr. Brown paid no attention whatever to Nutkin. He shut his eyes obstinately and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home in the evening.
By next morning, they all came back again to Owl Island and Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of old Brown's doorway and said, Mr. Brown, will you favor us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle and singing, Old Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, hitty pity will bite you. Mr. Brown woke up and suddenly carried the mole into his house. He shut the door in Nutkin's face. Presently, a little thread of blue smoke from a wood fire came up from the top of the tree and Nutkin peeped through the hole and sang, a house full, a hole full, and you cannot gather a bowl full. The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks. But Nutkin gathered oak apples, yellow and scarlet, and sat upon a beech stump playing marbles and watching the door of old Mr. Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present for old Mr. Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. Twinkleberry and six other little squirrels each carried a fat minnow, but Nutkin, who had no nice manners, brought no present at all. He ran in front singing, the man in the wilderness said to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought I could. As many red herrings will grow in the wood, but old Mr. Brown took no interest in myrtles, not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums and plum pudding for old Mr. Brown. Each beetle was wrapped up carefully in a dock leaf fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nutkin sang as rudely as ever, Old Mr. B, riddle me re, flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in a shower of rain, Put it in a bag tied round with a string. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nutkin because he had not got any ring to give old Mr. Brown. The other squirrels hunted up and down the nut, the nut bushes, but Nutkin gathered Robin's pincushions off of a briar bush and stuck them full of pine needle pins. What is Nutkin doing? Everyone else is working pretty hard but he's just goofing off, right? On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down on, upon the stone. They had stolen it out of a bumblebee's nest on the tippity top of the hill. But Nutkin skipped up and down singing, hum a bum buzz buzz, hum a bum buzz buzz. As I went over to Pultine, I met a flock of bonnie swine, some yellow necked, some yellow backed. They were the very bonnie swine that e'er went over the tipple time. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Nutkin, but he ate up the honey. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts, but Nutkin sat upon a big flat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and green fur combs. Kind of looks like bowling, right? Is he bowling? On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg in a little rush basket as a last parting present for old Mr. Brown. There it is. There's the egg. But Nutkin ran in front laughing and shouting, Humpty Dumpty lies in the back with the white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put Humpty Dumpty to rights. Now, old Mr. Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and shut it again, but still he did not speak. Nutkin became more and more impertinent. Old Mr. B, old Mr. B, hickamore, hackamore on the king's kitchen door. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive hickamore, hackamore off the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but still old Mr. Brown said nothing at all. 
and began singing again. Arthur O'Bower has broken his band. He comes roaring up the land. The King of Scots with all his power cannot turn Arthur of the Bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind and he took a running jump off onto the head of old Mr. Owl. Then all at once, there was a flutterment and a scufflement and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes when they came back very cautiously peeping around the tree. There was old Mr. Brown sitting on his doorstep quite still with his eyes closed as if nothing happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Mr. Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out of the attic window. Oh my goodness, there's the other part of his tail. And to, and to this day, if you meet Nutkin up a tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and scold and shout, the end. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those two stories. Um, probably read a couple more next time. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye.